Hi everyone, this is Miss Live Podcast and Let's Talk Series on IG Live. And my guest today is none other than fashion designer, Michael Costello. Thank you for joining us, Michael. Thank you for having me. So I know that we've, your, your, your staff have been working on something super incredible and I want to jump into that right away because we'll learn about all this stuff a little later. I want to know what you're working on and how are you keeping your spirit up and how are you keeping your crew very, very, very busy during this difficult time? Yeah, so right now we're working on making the non-medical grade surgical mask that um, the governor and the mayor of uh, California have been asking us and everybody's teaming up to try and get these masks done. It's so important right now, um, you know, with the COVID virus 19 going on, so many people don't realize that they touch their face over 2,500 times per day. 2,500 times per day. The CDC um, let us know that, and of course the number seems almost unbelievable, but we do. So the face masks that we're making, you know, they're not the N95 grade mask, the surgical mask that the doctors are in need of right now. These are just like a protective face mask. And, um, you know, anything that you can use right now for some protection for you to stop touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth, um, your ears, all of that is super incredible right now. Um, and, uh, one of the things that caused me to start this is because I was in isolation and quarantine myself, you know, following the rules, um, and just staying in and watching Netflix and catching up on shows. But it hit me when I realized that I have all this machinery and all these people that we let go and told, you know, that they can't come back to work. They felt bad. I felt bad. And I felt like there's something I could do. So I decided to turn my workspace into a super mask um, making facility. And uh, then, you know, people start to reach out who wanted to help fabric vendors. A lot of people started to reach out that wanted to help. And now I'm able to, you know, I'm self-funding the project and I'm trying to get my girls who've been so loyal and faithful working with me since day one, you know, we love making gowns together. We love making dresses together, but since we can't do what we love, we're doing what we can. And I'm being able to give back to my girls who've been so loyal and faithful to me. I'm able to give them work now and, and able to have them make these masks. It's not what they're used to, but um, you know, we're doing it and we're cranking them out. And here's, here's, here's some of them right now on the, on the, uh, they're, they're just they're just getting bagged that's a shipment that's going to kaiser permanente um let me grab one for you so you can uh so you can see what it looks like later on i'll take you to the back of the um of the workspace and you can see Thanks. and michael the other designers are in the industry are all jumping in who inspired oh, you to start this christian siriano amazing let me get this mask so he's on the east here. coast so we have east coast designer west coast designer coming together for this amazing cause. So if you guys go to Instagram, on Michael's Instagram, you can see a lot of posting that he has done the last week about how this mask project came about. And I couldn't be more proud of him as a friend and as someone in the same field as him trying to contribute. And it's, you have to go and some of these, go, some of the pictures that that's on the internet, you yeah. can take a look at and look at his staff. Uh, so those are my, that's my staff, those are my girls. So Michael and I both have our own studio, we work, with a lot of people, we can't do what we do on our own. So, so while this was happening, I think Michael, you and I had a, a, a same path of thinking. I was really concerned about the people who work for me, who are loyal with me for some for 20 some years. And yeah. I too went to a self isolation quarantine really, really early. I remember a uh, space timing with mask on the very first yeah. time right away. And the mask education has changed and evolved in the last seven days. And I remember when the very beginning, you and I keep talking about, we're gonna have a shortage of masks, you guys. And America just not ready and understanding what prevention means. Even 5% prevention, why would you not take that option? If you have to put a piece of paper over your mouth to protect yourself for Do it. just for 5%, why would you not? So I am so happy and so glad that education has now um, <laughs> permeated and throughout the community and and as a creative person, I could not be more proud of what you're doing. So thank you so much, Michael. Now, yeah, and I wanted like to point out there to most of the people because um, the over the response and, and the request for these has just been almost overwhelming because so many people want them for individual purposes, like just to yes. wear them, just to have them so they can still continue to go out. But the safest thing you still can do is, you know, practice the social distancing, stay inside, stay home, stay safe, and you don't need a mask. You know what I mean? 
Right. Um, I want to keep these for the medical providers, for our first responders, for our nurses, our doctors, our triage, our firefighters, our professional health care givers. They are the people who need them more than anybody. Absolutely. So I don't want people to feel like uh, we're being selfish and giving them out. That's just, that's just not what it is. We're trying to do the best that we can to get them to the people who need them the most. And Michael, you mentioned on the top of this that you are doing this, you're funding yourself. Have you thought about doing a GoFundMe program? You know what? We're starting it today. Uh, I just got off the phone with a couple of people that are helping me with everything. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we're just going to start it up today. Um, you know, the thing is, we don't really need a, a lot of money for this. This is not something that we're trying to reach millions of dollars for at all. Um, you know, the, the government and the mayor is working with so many people right now and giving them the funding that they need to keep their facilities open. Uh, we do know that he's very busy. Hopefully the mayor will get back to us in time and, and he'll help us with the funding. But until then, I'm self-funding. And uh, we, uh, we, I see a lot of messages asking how much are they. We're not selling the mask. Um, we don't want to make any profit off of this because, again, we want, just want to make sure that they get in the right hands to the people who need them the most. So we're donating them all. So that's why we're asking people to not ask for them for, for, um, for, for their own use, but for people who need them in the medical field. That's what we're trying to get them out for. So we're going to start the GoFundMe page today. Uh, we're right, going to set right. a goal. Uh, because we're basically using the money to just give the seven women that are working here some jobs, pay for their gas, pay for their meals, uh, pay for some supplies, and play, pay for the notions that we need. Well, thank you so much for your service to our community, and thank you for, for supporting the first responders in, the, in this. I, I couldn't be more proud of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you guys, as you hear that, there will be a GoFundMe program um, in support of this, so watch out for it. I'm sure Michael will be posting on his Instagram, and I will do the mm -hmm. same. So please follow us, and we'll take a look at um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll keep our eye on see the progress of this, and we'll do everything we can to support you, Michael. Thank you. Absolutely. So now we're going to move into a little bit more creative, a little bit more about you. And as you can see, everyone, these pictures behind me are the divas of all divas. We have JLo and we have Mariah Carey. And there's two of them behind me. And happy anniversary to Mariah Carey. It is her birthday today, or how she likes to refer to it, her anniversary. So wishing her a very happy birthday. Absolutely. And we, we love her. We both, we've got, we both got to work with her and you with her um, in a much more intimate, friendly relationship. I got to work with her, I think, twice now. And it's, it, it was an absolute delight to work with somebody who was so incredibly talented. And she, she deserved the title. Oh, God, she is so the best nice. in the world. She is so wonderful. Now, I got to tell you, I was so intimidated. Now, now before, before I started working this close with Mariah, I would just design things and work with her stylist. We'd have a couple of fittings, and I was always so intimidated to meet her because I've heard so many things like, oh, she's the biggest diva. She's difficult to work with. So not true. She is such a delightful person to work with. Um, the, Michael Costello fans, Mariah fans, they all know that I recently became um, the fashion director for Mariah Carey. And it's been really great working with her and the entire team. And she's so cool. She knows exactly what she wants. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't have any issues at all with working with her at all. I wish I could share some kind of crazy diva story, but there, well, there aren't any. Let me help you define a little bit of this, this word diva. I think it has such a negative connotation in our industry. Yeah. I actually love the word diva because a true diva actually knows exactly who they are and they mm -hmm. treat everybody kindly as themselves would be like to be treated. Take us through your journey a little bit because a lot of our fans and audience here know that you're from Project Runway and I would love for you to share a little bit of that journey, how you get from the runway to the red carpet. So, um, yeah, I started out uh, at a very young age. I was a little kid, always playing with, you know, fabric and socks. And, and I said this early on, I would take a pencil and I would put the sock on top of a pencil to make believe and mimic like, like if it was a Barbie doll. And I would walk it around and make believe the sock was its long hair. And I'd wrap toilet paper around the pencil as if I was creating a dress. So my mom would tell me I was doing that at the age of like one and two years old. And my dad, although he was mad and he was like, what the hell is he doing? My mom always encouraged it. My dad would always try and give me GI Joes and, 
and all these kind of toys. And, 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 and when I would take the clothes off the, off the GI Joes, my brother was like, Oh, he wants to see the GI Joe naked. That's, that was never the case. I was infatuated with the jacket and I would take Barbie's clothes off and I turned them inside out to see how are they made? Like, how is this? I was always infatuated with like, what is this seam for to make this sleeve, sleeve like this? And that's why we get in trouble with my sisters too, because I would take their clothes and I'd cut the sleeves off and I'd cut hearts and shapes out of the fabric and they'd beat the crap out of me. And so would my dad, but my mom always knew. So at a young age, she would take me and sit me on her lap and she'd sew at the sewing machine with me on her lap. She'd hand crochet blankets and doilies and these little things and teach me how to do macrame when I was four years old. And she'd use my hand too as part of the process. And I'd sit there with my hand and she'd show me how to, how to do this. So my mom really taught me everything I know at a young age. And um, when I was 15, I opened my very first store in Palm Springs, California with the, with the help of my dad, of course. And um, so in I, a way, dad was very supportive. My dad was very supportive at, at, at a very young age because he saw what I was, what I was doing. And he knew that I wasn't into the gypsy Romanian cultural things like, uh, you know, the guy, no, uh, no shame in their game or what they, what they practice or do. But a lot of the guys in our culture, they're in auto body repair. Um, some of them are really, really good at it. And, um, or, or, or they do things in automotive. They, they do a lot of that type of stuff. It's more like where they're focused. You just didn't at. fall into the, the classic mold. That, yeah. I didn't like, fall into like, that. I didn't become mold. a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> and I'm not so good on the piano. So I didn't follow the mold. I wish I was, I wish I was good at the piano though. My brother got the got musical for, gene. I got one for Christmas for myself and I'm going to try to take some time to learn it. I, I really do want to learn it. My brother is incredible on the guitar. He's so good. We've um, seen you guys. We've seen we, you guys you know, perform. We are a musical family, though. My, my, also, my brother-in-law used to play for the Gypsy Kings. He played with them for 10 years. And um, he's one of the really, really popular guitar players. All of my nephews are incredible guitar players. Um, but well, I want to you be talented. I mean, I think music and art and... and, and and sewing and making clothes for the for alias celebrities or everyday people. All these are art forms that I think I think it's just in you. I, I don't think you can just pick one art and be good at it. I think you have to you have to be multifaceted. And I, and people always ask me, Michael, if you weren't doing fashion, what it what is it exactly that you would have done? And I said I would have liked to major in linguistics and cooking because I I love to cook. Let's and cook I'm, together, Michael. I'm so selfish when it comes to my cooking because I feel like everything I make is better than everyone else's. Oh my, we're and gonna I, have a cook off, you guys. You and I are gonna have a little cook off. My dream reality show is to go on Chopped and for them to give me a mystery basket so I can make something amazing you with the what? mystery That's basket. That's a challenge. I, I want but to I be know, with you. I already know that I'd probably get the worst basket. I'd get like, I don't know, like seahorse guts, fish <laughs> eyeballs and like jellyfish dick. So Wait, that's a that, that's a delicatessen in Asian menu. What are you talking about? That's You're like, bitch, I could make mini corn dogs out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's jump right back into to your journey through um, Project Runway because we we know that that was part of your identity, how you you were part of that. That, that was my dog. <laughs> so we know that was part of your identity and that was um, part of Heidi Klum's um, franchise. And, and we both work with Heidi. Yeah, um, we both work with Heidi. Heidi's I such a wonderful person. Wonderful. To work with. What, uh, before we get into it, what was the uh, what was the craziest thing somebody's ever asked you about Heidi? If she is as genuine and nice and hyper as she is in person, and yes, I, was, she is. Is she a fembot? <laughs> and my you answer know, was yes. <laughs> we work with a lot of different personalities in the industry, yeah, and some do. do grow an ego, and some do get callous, or some just 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 jaded by the fact that that people think they're beautiful or whatnot but Heidi it's incredible I mean I watch I remember watching her on Victoria's Secret Runway show I was like oh my gosh she is the ultimate Barbie doll right she is she's joyful she exudes this energy and when I finally got to meet her I got it I understood this is her 100% Heidi is so wonderful 
Um, she's such a wonderful and amazing piece of, per person. We'll get, go into that. Um, you know, I didn't make it all the way on Project Runway. I made it to the finale round. Uh, of course, I didn't win, but that's that's totally fine. Um, and I was known to date in the whole history of Project Runway to have the most epic meltdown elimination <laughs> episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think one of the reasons that I had that meltdown was because there was so much pressure on me from the show and pressure from my family because if I didn't win, you know, my family still wanted me to come back home, give all this fashion stuff up, uh, get married again and like, you know, live the live the Romanian gypsy lifestyle and the pressure of not being accepted for who I am and what I wanted to do was, was on my shoulders really hard. So I took my elimination really hard. And even though Heidi comes up to every designer and she says, Afuidize, you know, her famous words, she says goodbye to everybody. Um, after the show, she shut down the cameras and we've never talked about this until now. Uh, she shut off the cameras and she came to me, she gave me the biggest hug and she said, this is, do you think that this is going to be it for you? She said, what I say to people and each designer on that runway, I mean what I tell them, but it doesn't end here. But you already know that you're something great. And although it may have not been today, as I say in fashion, the next day you're in, one day you're in and the next day you're out, you will never be out. Big things are going to happen for you and I want to wear you one day. And I took that advice and I listened to it. And I never gave up. And um, yeah, I was hurt. I was devastated when I got eliminated. But now there's only been two designers in the whole history of Project Runway that become the breakout stars. And that's myself and Christian Siriano. No shade at all to any of the other designers. I'm sure everybody works very hard. We've all had amazing placements. We've dressed Beyonce's, Cardi B's, whoever they are, we've dressed them. But um, I think uh, publicity-wise, fame-wise, recognition-wise, um, uh, business-wise to be recognized by some of the greatest people in fashion and uh, people who have paved the way for all designers. I think Christian and I have definitely, um, without sounding selfish, have definitely reaped the benefits of the show. So we have a lot of Romanian gypsy followers and they're always asking me to speak my language because one of, the, one of the things in my community is people think that I've completely given up on my culture and the people that speak my language and it's not true. Actually, out of all of my brothers and sisters, I'm the one who speaks my language the most, especially with my mom and dad. So I'm going to take five seconds and say hi to them so that they know that I still do speak the language and I still am part of the culture. I'm just very Americanized and it's okay. So, Sarsan, Romalia Shavali, Katesa, my Davduma Gado Gajesa, a very bottle per kilo. Also, my bottle photographer, Jikin Sao Honde and America, I won't go to the Mansa about my career, about Bukik I could have, if he's down on the Akarav, I Akanazum of the La Sharav, put Pramil Doctor Ronsa, the Karalinga Lego Dava Mask, I jump in the Muya. So, Katesa Makanai does Duma. Nice to meet you, Kavinia. So I just told everybody from my community, thank you so much. I'm talking with you. Tsai was an amazing fashion photographer and friend. And we're talking about all kinds of topics from fashion to mask to everything and food. So thank well, you. Well, we also have a lot of Asian fans here. And I know you speak a little bit of Chinese. So go for it. Ni hao ma. Ning jiao sun wa ming tzu. Wa da ming tzu. Michael. You know what? That'll get you. That'll get you very, very far in Asia. <laughs> so do me a favor. I would love for our viewers to understand more of your brain. How do you go from a sketch, as you have described, like this one from Mariah, that you can imagine it, you can see it on her, you can see how it moves, to actually draping and actually sewing? Can you walk us through or even demonstrate? Yeah, so um, yeah, I'd love to demonstrate. I'll take my phone off the charger and we'll go to, we'll go to my um, to my area where I do my sketching. Um, it's crazy, I think my imagination is so vivid I can almost see things from the inside out and know exactly how to construct them. Um, I mean, like, it's always not 100% spot on. We always have to make some kind of adjustment. Mm -hmm. But um, I think when you've just been doing it for so long or you do have that love and that passion for it, things kind of start to unravel. Like, I look at the basic fundamentals of, of, of a garment and I can see them turn into numbers and then I can see them turn into shapes. So I look at them almost as if, if I'm looking at, looking at it all into pieces and all inside out. And then I could imagine how to sew it, how to construct it together. And I, like I said, I think my imagination is so vivid. I can always see it coming down the runway. 
like so clear and so perfect and I, and I see it moving from every angle and then I know exactly how I want to make it and what to do when I, when I, when I, when I'm making it. And a lot of designers are, that, that have come in and tried to work with us like sample makers and pattern makers, some of them get it and some of them don't understand it. Right. Some of them are expert at their craft and they sew impeccably, but they need a pattern. It's right. very rare that I can find the ones that are similar to what I've done um, all these years. And, and what I've noticed, the ones who do know how to work like me are the ones who've never been to fashion school and learned tricks of the trade. That's interesting. How it starts is sometimes there's a mood board. Um, depending on who the client is, what the treatment is, or what you're designing for, if let's let's do a quick example let's talk about that mariah sketch so what happened was i recently became the creative fashion director at mariah carey so um that means like whatever she's wearing whatever she uh wants to wear for a red carpet or event i'm i'm the one who is styling her and creating the look and creating the image for her huge title love it it was amazing so she and i will then uh, mariah and i will then have an uh, a conversation like what are you envisioning for tonight and she'll say uh, make it black or make it cut out make it sexy make it with long sleeves so then I'd start out by sketching three maybe two to three options um, after she sees the options we'd move forward to sketching them when she approves the sketch then we make a prototype we take the prototype to the mannequin drape the fabric and it's a, it's a big process because I keep the celebrity um, in mind at all time and we're constantly texting back. However, I do have clients and do have celebrities that are just like, Michael, I trust you. Come up with the, the sketch and the concept and we'll go with it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, a high, it's always a high percentage on that that we, we usually go with what I go with. And I love those clients when they just trust me like mm -hmm. that to go with it. Mm -hmm. But um, after, we, um, after we agree on design, we make it, then we do a fitting. Once the fitting takes place, uh, we try it on. Um, it's usually just me and um, the artist or the celebrity or the performer or the client at that point doing the fitting. Um, if we need a tailor or a seamstress or a stylist, they're usually there too to make adjustments or suggestions. Um, and then we go back and we, we correct the piece. And then, you know, either the next day or that week, you see it on the on the red carpet, but I'll walk you through like a, a little example. Let me take my charger with me. Amazing. I, I lost the big, the small part for my charger, so I have to use this thing. <laughs> I know, it's, it's kind of crazy. And it's a little bright right here. So I hope we're not too blinding. Hang on. Oh, it's bright. So it's really exciting for you guys to see this process because, um, you know, on Project Runway, you get to see some of this stuff. But when you actually, on set as a photographer, when you see a beautiful dress that's perfectly fitted for a talent like Mariah, for example, that we both worked with before, that you forget the process and the hard the work that you came before. Yeah. We're talking about at least a week or two to really construct that dress, right? Yeah, at least a week or two. When, it, when, it's, when it's something for like a show, or a residency or a vac or like a Vegas show, we get some time to work on those. But then we have other things, you know, that pop up like uh, a spur the moment photo shoot mm. or uh, somebody's book for a cover or something like that. The stylus and the treatment, sometimes you don't really get that much time. It's usually a week's time between the whole entire production because the celebrity is so busy. They have so many other things to do. So the stylist will only get about two days really to pull ready-made looks from designers or have some of the some of the favorite designers or their go-to designers that they know can turn something out next day. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we've been called upon by all those, you know, stylists because they know our turnaround time is super quick. And Maybe you just because that, I'm thirsty. I can attest to that because there have been there have been shoots I've been on, there have been T V shows I've been on and they will ask me, the producer asked me, which designer should we call that we know can can be there for us right away. And that had happened on American Next Top Model quite a few times. And yes. Yes. And then as well as on photo shoots. And, and we also did a segment together for um, Asian, uh, American Beauty Star. And you were- Oh, that's right. Yes. So Michael and I have yet to be on set together. And I know. Something... And then we had, we had a, a wonderful moment with Serena Williams together when yes. you did the Sports Illustrated and I did the, um, the swimsuit. 
That was my it, first Sports Illustrated cover. With Serena Williams? Yes. I didn't shoot that one. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, you did. I did shoot that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was thinking of the swimwear issue. I forgot. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my, oh gosh. my skin oh my is God. falling. That was <laughs> such, Can I tell you? That was so incredible. That was yes. incredible. I didn't. Michael, I didn't know that was your outfit. Oh my gosh. So Michael and I have to be on set together at one time. That has to be something we must make happen soon because that was That's my bucket stunning. list. And um, yes. Oh yes. Speaking of bucket list, um and he was tell he texts me, he says, Listen, when are we gonna actually work together? And I was like, What do you mean? I, I I'm on I'm on set and your clothes is there. Is it not working together? He goes, No, I wanna be working shooting together. And can I tell you, when you told me that, I was like shocked. I was so shocked because I see that you dress everyone. I mean, J-Lo to Mariah to all the icons and friends with, with all these celebrities. I, I do photograph them, but I wouldn't call them my friends because the intimacy yeah. between a photographer and a talent is very different than somebody who sees them naked pretty much and put clothes yeah. on them. So our relationship with celebrities are very different. And so all these friends of yours, for you to say, um, you on my bucket list to shoot together. I I I cried a little. I was like, wow. Oh my it god. Was, it was I mean, such. I had chills. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna be, be, I'm gonna be honest. Hard, even but... even right now, having this live stream, this conversation with you, we have a little over a hundred followers right now watching us. I'm still blown away that we're having this conversation and, and, and talking because I've always been a fan since I was young. I won't put no dates on it because then people are going to know how old we are. But what I'll say is um, I had a bucket list and I still have the piece of paper. I should have brought it so I can pull it out and show you guys today. But there's a few people on on my on my list that I've always wanted to work with and um and I told youth side that he was number seven on the list um as far as photographers and it, it really has uh one of the models I've always wanted to work with was Heidi Klum um one of the people I've always wanted to meet was Giselle Bunchen so we ha I've had this list for so long and fortunately I've been able to check almost 80 percent of it off well, yeah. there's no reason not to check our relationship off because we we've been on the red carpet together. We've been <laughs> we've been walking the path in the industry together. And 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 thank you for the mutual admiration because I I what you guys do is technical, it's hands on, and then translate that to creativity is is so different than what I do. And if I get the opportunity to create with you, I will absolutely love it. It will be an honor, absolutely honor. But I was really surprised. I was like, what? He can choose anybody to work with. Why me? But I can see one thing, though. We have an aesthetic that we love beautiful, powerful women. That's something yes. I think is very, very common in our, in our vocabulary. And I remember you DM me saying, oh, my God, I love the Cindy Crawford shoot that you just did. And you didn't have to explain to me why. I knew that you loved it because that shoot was so important for me. It was uh, 50 still looking at 10, basically, for Cindy, yeah. right? She never ages. And the image had to be youthful, but powerful at the same time. And when you DM me, and for me, it was like, yes, I did my job. I captured the way that Michael would love it. That means he, the image is powerful, strong, and still capture Cindy. So that, so I know we speak the same visual language and then, and the conceptual language. So for so us to collaborate together is no brainer, no brainer. I can't all. wait for today. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait for it. It's going to be amazing. Well, people always, always want to know in our business is that how, how's the relationship with your clients? How, how, I'll give you an example. How do you deal with, I get asked this too, right? How do you deal with clients who show up not at their very best condition for photography or for dresses and clothes. What do you do as a fashion stylist, therapist, best friend <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> yeah, to be okay, next so. to them? So, um, I mean, it happens a lot. Uh, it happens a lot with, um, you know, our bridal. We always have our clients who come in for bridal fittings. We ask them nicely to arrive freshly showered, no hair, no makeup, no glam. And that's really tough for them because when they come mm. here, they want to look their absolute best. 
And we tell them, you're just trying on the shell, you're just trying on this and that. But what they don't realize is the fabric is so delicate that as soon as it's done being worked on, it goes back into a garment bag until their next fitting. Um, some of the fabrics that they get are so delicate and so expensive that that's why we ask for that. A lot of celebrities get it though. They understand that part. And at the end of their busy day, when they come to fit with me, they just want to be super comfortable. Mm. It's a trust thing. It's almost like a therapeutic session. They know we're not going to take any pictures. They right. know we're not going to post anything or do any kind of stories. So it's a comfort that they start to feel with you. And, you know, they share, they're, they're, they're not only sharing their nakedness in their body in, in, in a room with you, they're sharing, you know, their life experience of what, of what, what they went through that day. Or if this one's boyfriend was out too late, you, you know, you become friends friends with mm -hmm. with some of these people and the stories that they tell you, you you you're like oh my gosh and then you go in the car and you pinch yourself you're like i cannot believe that this <laughs> and this person is going through the same shit that i'm going through god damn this is crazy but um you know uh th there's there's a, there's a lot of celebrities that we've gotten really close with and i think it's about what i what i've learned is that if you are someone that they feel is relatable or have gone through the same situations that they've gone through, they feel a comfort around you in sharing. Um, but if they feel like you're a person who is just going to take the information that they just gave you and run your mouth with it, then, you know, don't be surprised if you don't get booked again. And, and don't be surprised if you're not seeing them again. And that's a test to your client list. Like we know based on our client list of people we work with and these are the people that trust you and they continue to come back. I know that as a photographer, when I'm shooting a model or a celebrity that shows up and might just whisper in my ear and says, listen, jet lagging, bloated, that size two or size four is not gonna fit today, but I wanna look like I fit in there. So you better <laughs> trick your camera and figure it out. And that's yeah. kind of trust that you begin to build with someone. And I'm sure the same way when you're making clothes, you're putting a second skin on someone because it needs oh, to, yeah. it, it, you have to accentuate the best of the best of their part and, and, and de-emphasize the part that we're not happy about at that day. Maybe not yesterday, but today, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, when if it's when it's a performer piece like you've seen on stage, and 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 uh, we have done a lot of stage performance pieces, we build almost like a whole new body on the inside. Some people start to think like we are plastic surgeons, or uh, we do air sculpting in in, in inside of a gown. Um, the only tricks that we do have are corsets and lace-ups and boning. Um, that's about it. We add them to accentuate that waist. We add them to uh, give the illusion of a longer, leaner body. So, um, I mean, you find a celebrity that, that's going to tell you that they don't want to look long and lean. You know, they're lying. They're just being very <laughs> modest. Everybody wants to look long and lean. But everybody uh, understands that when they do work with me, myself, Michael Costello, that we cannot you know give them plastic surgery and we can't create a gown that's gonna like take them from a size 10 to a size zero but what they've learned to love about us is that we design for them and accentuate what they already have mm. and and that's that's one thing that that we pride ourselves in but and and there's this there's a signature look Definitely a signature look to my. I think I Costello. love a mermaid gown. I love a mermaid gown like that that snatches in the waist, flares out at the bottom. Yeah, that's a hot mermaid look. I love that. I love that. I think I think I was a mermaid in my former life. Oh, look at Camille. Do you know Camille Kostek? She's gorgeous. Yes. I feel, mwah, just had to say hi to her. I just saw her message. So so the mermaid gown. Walk us through what is a mermaid gown for those of us who don't know. Do I have a minute to fix my do? <laughs> Um, so a mermaid gown um, is a little bit different than a trumpet gown. They're, people get them confused a little bit. A trumpet gown is higher at the hip, so it's fitted throughout the bodice, and then it starts mm. to wear out at the hip. As far as a mermaid gown, a mermaid gown gets more tapered and uh, more pencil-like shape towards the knee and flares out at the bottom. 
this dress um, is so popular. Everybody look, I think everyone can look really great in a mermaid gown. Um, it really accentuates your body. It, it gives you body for days, makes the waist look small. The and not just are... women, it works great for drag queens. For, for yes, all it the does. Drag shows. <laughs> Have you ever done drag? No, I don't think I'd be very good at it, but you know, I think RuPaul loves a good mermaid gown. She loves a good strapless mermaid gown. And she's and you been dressed her before, same. right? Never! Not what? yet. I can't, okay. I know. I, I can't That's wait. That's my bucket it. list to work with her. Same. Because oh she's God. always worked with the same designer, though. I forgot, I forgot his name. Um, I hope I don't get oh hi Martin um I forget about I forgot his name but he always makes her gowns he knows her body he knows exactly how to design a dress that's going to hit her in the right area so this is an interesting question for you since you have so many particular clients they work with a lot do you have a form of mannequin that's actually their size in I your do studio? would you like to go and see them yes can you give us a tour I can yes so hang on hello Parches I like saying hi to people. So this is super exciting for me. I have so yet to visit Michael Costello's studio, and I'm a bad friend because I have so the here's, here our, um, here's our little area of... Um, and look at the... Wait, wait, wait. Go to the... Let's go to that little the statue. Tell us a little bit about the statue, please. So this is my Emmy that I won for wardrobe for um, American Horror Story for costumes. Oh, amazing. Says it down there. Send it to Michael Costello and Lou Irick. And then this is Oprah. When Oprah came and surprised me at with my, pizza. my place with pizza, which was an incredible. Oh my god, incredible. I cried. <laughs> so the the pic the pictures that I have, they they have of of course, if you guys follow me and you see my page, you know that I have tons of pictures with these people. But there's there's only pictures here for special um, moments, like. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, this is Heidi Klum. She sang me ha happy birthday on my birthday because every year for the last four years, I've been uh, doing Germany's Next Top Model with her and it always fell around the time on my birthday. So this was the first time we've done it together. And then um, I filmed this episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians with Kim and it was also my birthday. We did something for, um, for Caitlyn Jenner. And Kim and I had like a really, uh, a really, really great moment. I won't say what it was, but we really connected on this, on that day. Mm. And then um, this was, uh, this was also January 21st in Las Vegas. And my birthday's on the 20th. And um, JLo sang me a cute little birthday, birthday song. Here's our mutual friend, Anastasia, back there. And um, I invited her to come when uh, Oprah came to do a surprise at the uh, place. Okay, so let me give you a little tour. Let me uh, put, let me get the light on, hang on. So obviously the studio is not as busy today. No, it's definitely not as busy and not as clean. We, we're, um, we're, we don't have our cleaning people. So this is um, one of my most, I would say the most famous and popular moment dressing Beyonce for um, the 2014 Grammys. And one of my main goals, and that was on my bucket list, was I wanted to be on the front cover of the Los Angeles Times. Wow. So um, this is our front cover and Beyonce from the Grammys. And then over here, this is our J-Lo wall. Um, it goes, so we just moved into this space. We haven't put every, any, everything on, but we have over 62 Jennifer Lopez placements. There's, there's wow. a lot, there's a lot. So there's cover of People Magazine, uh, this is her and my good friend Sean Barton from the Grammys. This was our Super Bowl moment two years ago. This is our very first uh, JLo moment four years ago in Las Vegas. Um, we made this money print and then everyone copied the looks after we did this first. You know. So Michael, so when you have a relationship with like JLo, you work with a lot and this happened with photographers as well. One day she doesn't call you and you see her wearing somebody else's dress on the red carpet or at an event. Does that, does that just little sting, a little pain kind of jump in your heart? In the, be in the beginning it did. In the beginning it really did. I was like, oh my God, we made a dress that she was supposed to wear for that. Oh no, I'm so sad. But the thing is after a while, um, her stylist, Rob Zangardi and Mariel Hahn, you know, we mm. all became really good friends. And I love them. They're almost like a second family to us. And I, and I really mean that. I'm not just talking out of my ass. But they're brilliant. They've done 
so they're many just so great. Means. We did, and, we did no doubt out of packaging. Yeah, they're great. They'll call me now when they, when they, they just won't use me as an option. And I think that's what's important because a lot of designers out there, even some of the major fashion houses, Versace, um, Zuhair Mirage, Chanel, you know, a lot of amazing stylists have great relationships with them, but they pull pieces as options. Right. Fortunately, fortunately, um, I, I've got to a place to where I'm comfortable working now with a lot of the stylists. And a lot of people don't call me when it's just going to be a rack filler or option. They call me when they have a vision and an idea and they're like, she's going to wear this for this. Amazing. So I've been only saying yes to those jobs because what the people don't know is how expensive it is to create an option um, just in hopes that you get the placement. You know, most people, most stylists, they have a budget, but some want to know if you're willing to do it for free or for trade well and, and, i i gotta say i remember this series of <laughs> series of instagram that you had a couple of years ago when people were writing can i have that long dress in the short skirt form or can i i, I texted oh, yes, i asked yes. you for a long sleeve jacket with no sleeves <laughs> so, it's yeah. the craziest request so continue the tour um, this is our, our Beyonce wall. We have the queen. Uh, the queen. We have lots of Beyonce placements. I haven't got to put them all yet. So that's but, on my bucket list as well to work with Beyonce. She always uses the same photographer for everything. So the chances of this, it'll, it'll happen, but she's one of my, my, my bucket lists for sure. I love her. So because we, we, I mean, I literally didn't want to put up every single moment that we've had. That's like you putting up every single picture that you shot. So there's there's just there's just too many. So I decided to only put like my favorite moments mm. or uh, moments that really meant something to me. So when you come into our studio, you'll see you'll see those moments because people come and they're like, why didn't you put up the Gaga thing of this and mm. that, or why didn't you put up the Nicki Minaj thing of that? How come you didn't put? And I go, well, it's not that I didn't like that one. It's just. It, it was beautiful and was great, but you know, like I saved the walls for favorite moments. So, well, like, will you do me a favor? One. Save a space Start. for the wall. For yes, us. for me. Save and a you. space for us. These are our Lady Gaga's, fun Lady Gaga's, and then these are from my show. These are from the last show that we did, and this was a very incredible moment for me. I've always wanted to work with Coco Rocha. And Coco Rocha opened and closed my show. Wow. And that was amazing. And then um, this is Valentina Sampaio. She's the first openly transgender um, Victoria's Secret model. And um, she did my show. And that was, that was kind, of, kind of amazing for me. And then there's Coco again. So now we're going to go into the workspace. Now, guys, you have to keep in mind, we're normally constructing gowns here and doing beadwork. Our whole facility is turned into a new medical grade facility to make face mask. Mm -hmm. So um, this is what it looks like right now. Here's the mask. You know, this is them being cut right now. And then that's, this is what they look like. We're making some, this is the medical grade kind. This is the uh, non-medical grade fabric kind. And then we're making them out of Ponte. These are the girls. Hi, ladies. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank everyone you, ladies, for working. working so hard. Thank you guys so much for your contribution to this situation we're all in. We Thank all just so had Carl's Jr. <laughs> um, before all of this happened, this was a dress that we were doing for Rita Ora. But wow. it, got put on, we got, it got put on hold. Her event got put on hold. So you can see that that was a dress that we we're doing. I draped this. It just has a few pins here. So just to give you an idea, this is just two pieces of fabric draped together before it becomes an actual dress. And then look at this. The rest of the fabric is right back here, just waiting to be worked on again. This is Susanna. Hi, Susanna. Hey. Susanna's wearing her protective gear. Yeah. So Michael, she's making these masks. When, do, you, do you still drape every single dress that you're making for oh, your Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm in here just as much as the team is in here. If not, I'm here longer. My favorite time, um, because as you know, you, you run your company, I run my company. My favorite time to create is when I'm alone. 
That way I don't have to, you know, shadow or help any of the other seamstresses. Not that I, not that I don't want to, but when we're here for so long per day, that's what I'm doing in the back with them. We're all draping. We're all working together. We're all pinning. Um, and you're and laughing a lot because as, as we Michael, do, we I do know, laugh a lot. You always, I remember when we first met was on the red carpet, 2016 red carpet. You were there with oh, our were friends. We at, were we at Oscars? We were at the Oscars. And you were with Oscars, Shishi. Yeah. You were with Shishi. And I, you know, Shishi's voice, you can recognize. And she was doing her rehearsal, just tossing her lines like nobody's business. And I just, and she kind of skipped a line and you were next to her and I heard you laugh. And I knew <laughs> it was your laugh. There it is right there. I always I always give her I always give her so so much shit because she's great. She's great on CNN and HSN and all the shows that she does. But you you know when she's off camera, you come her, back? her voice is okay, still like okay. so uh, Wait, can you I, repeat I love, that? You froze a little well, bit. Can what you happened? repeat that? Repeat what you just said cuz you froze. Yeah, so when she she is on camera uh, and off camera, her voice is the same. It never changes. So when she talks to me, she's like, hi, Michael, how are you today? And then, <laughs> yes, we're going to go there. We're going live. And I'm like, she, she's just us. You <laughs> are she fabulous. Like, yeah. Love you. Like, I, I know the enthusiasm, the, the joy. I, I was very fortunate to have her on the on this talk series as well, as well when she heard I was doing this. She was so encouraged. She's like, you need to do this more. You need to get there. This is amazing. And she she agreed to be a, um, a guest on the show. We did that last week. It'll be on YouTube, you guys. You download. We talk about being... Um, Asian American, how we broke the boundary to be here. We both from the Midwest, so we have a lot of stuff in common. We're definitely sisters from from a different parent. Sis sister, <laughs> sister from another Mister. Totally. So, so, but one thing I did remember, Michael, is that you had this bow tie on, and mm. you had a sparkling but dazzled bow tie. Yeah. And I remember that, and a lot of people do ask, will Michael Costello design menswear? Yeah, I want to. We got into it a couple of times. I've tried doing a few. Uh, I, I tried doing a few of them, and um, and and I really loved it. I liked it a lot. I premiered my first men's fashion show. I think it was a Mercedes Benz Fashion Week in 2016. I did four looks, and um, they were really fun. I had Sean Ross in the show. I had some friends in the show. Jesse walked in the show too, and um, and, and it was good. We. we I, I really like unconventional menswear. Oh, hold on. I have a delivery that's downstairs. Let me go and get it. <laughs> you guys can come with me. I like unconventional menswear. I've never really liked to design the traditional, you know, like suit jacket and mm. suit pants. Um, it's fun. It's great. But for me, I like to design things for uh, that meets that borderline of androgyny a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. And, and there he is. Did you get your package? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. coming up right now. <laughs> well, Michael, we're running, we're getting close on time. What I want to do is I do want to talk about one thing that a lot of people do ask. When we see your work, it is so aspirational, inspirational. J-Lo in, in this amazing tightly fitted dresses. And then you have um, Mariah with just fabric flowing as she walks and creates wind around her. How does that translate to everyday wear for you? So here's how it is. When we design these amazing pieces, we have to be able to meet the demand to make these as ready to wear options and make these pieces that you see on the red carpet almost user friendly. Mm. So we um, partnered up with one of the best I think uh, e-com women's websites in the entire world is Revolve. And we've been designing with Revolve to make affordable fashion and beautiful fashion, not just in a size two or size four, but we do small, medium, large, extra large. And we make fashion for everybody. Um, it's, and this yeah. is a great example of that. Yes, I think really when is. I saw this, when you emailed this to me, I asked, for example, you have that strong shoulder line, that signature of Michael Costello, and you have the, the nice shoulder. leg showing through, you know, that little pick a poo moment that we always love in fashion. So I love this. And it can't go wrong with the animal print, right? You I mean, that's yeah, I love an animal print. I'm an animal inside. I think I'm a cheetah or maybe a leopard. But <laughs> I, love, I love a good strong shoulder, a short skirt, a short little sexy dress with long sleeves. I love a long dress with a high slit. 
You know, oh, this wait, little white dress is so long beautiful. Legs. <laughs> yeah, that's for you guys. I just surprised my staff with some delicious um, Armenian pastries. Do you guys want to see them really quick? Let me show you. Hold on. Hold on. Surprise! Hi, guys. <laughs> Armenian pastries, born cheeks. They're so good. And they're filled, so they're, good. filled with, they're filled with Nutella. Oh, but back to this little white dress. So this little dress uh, actually retails for under $200 on Revolve's website. And um, it's a super stretch fabric. Anybody can wear this. And you know, the great thing about it, if you feel like it's too short for you, you can pair it with a pair of leggings. That's a great holiday dress. You know, the holidays when they're coming up, New Year's or something, you can definitely wear that a little one shoulder dress with the ruching. I like doing a little ruching on the waist. It hides what you don't want to show. But I do feel like, Michael, a lot of the work that you do has a bit of 90s influence. It has that moment with Cindy Crawford, Claudia Schiffer, those powerful Naomi Campbell walking down the runway all together. With, you know, I feel like these are the clothes they wouldn't have worn back then, but, but transition and modernize for today's women. Well, that's what I try to do. I try to, um, I have a great team at Revolve and we all sit there and we brainstorm and we come up with ideas of what we want to make, when we want to make it. It's, it's such a fun process. There's so many fabrics to choose from. We have to do another video from Revolve's office one day so I can give you guys a great I tour. would love that. Yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. So, so this to me, I love that dress. It's I so love pretty. this because it's so, this is the direct translation that I can see Mariah wearing this with a different, more shine because she's on mm -hmm. stage and needs more pop. Yeah. But the cut, the ruffles, the movement, I love a dress that feels like it's going to fly when the wind hits it, right? Me too. I love that effortless style. Um, a lot of people have always compared me to Halston. And yes. I appreciate that. Yes. And I love that because I love to create things that accentuate and fall on a woman's body so that when she's walking, she just gives off the vibe of being very effortless. You know what it super is? super dreamy and romantic. We love women. We do. I do. Just not in the same way people. <laughs> But, but I, I think it's so ever important, especially now that designers like you are embracing women of all different sizes. You dress people from size two to size 16 and 18 even, yeah, and you make yeah. them look at their very, very best. And not only do you do dresses, look at this hot pants, you guys. I know, aren't those cute? And they're in a beautiful stretch fabric. It's a double stretch, so you can wear them with a great top like that, or you can wear them with a suit jacket or a blazer to the office, or even like a cute little crop top. There's yes. so many different ways that you can wear them. Well, it's time for a little fast Q&A before we run out of time. So it's Q&A time. Q&A time. And I have some questions that people have written down. Um, some of them are for me, but you won't know which one, but this is a great one. If you ha were asked to dress a fruit or vegetable, which will you pick? A fruit. A which fruit? A banana. <laughs> wow, you would dress a banana? I would think you say yeah. a gore. It has waves, it has a nice round face. I don't know, I like a banana. <laughs> well, I want to see you do a draping on a banana and post it for me. Done. <laughs> oh my God, I want to you do it, take a picture so I can post it on, a, on our okay. YouTube. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> All right, if you had to take one color out of the rainbow that you don't get to use, what color would it be? Uh, orange. Oh, okay. Is orange in the rainbow? Orange, yeah, I, I'm trying to picture that, that yellow canary dress you did for, for J-Lo. If that was an orange, it would probably not have worked. So yes, orange is probably good yeah. to, to be orange. taken out. And this question that we asked already that if you do menswear, you say yes. I'm gonna give you a little, um, you never want Project Runway, is that correct? That's correct. Never won. And yet, like the success of your career, was it a, was um, Project Runway your launching path for your career? I feel, I feel, well, a lot of people don't know this, but before Project Runway, I was already designing. Like, my friends were Misha Barton, Nicole Ritchie, Paris Hilton, um, you know, all those girls uh, growing up in L.A. We all knew each other when we were younger, so I would make them cute dresses, and they would sport them, and they would wear them. But, you know, I did that for so long. One of the biggest celebrities I ever dressed when I was 16 years old before Project Runway was Celine Dion. 
So wow. uh, back then, before social media and reality TV was, you know, doing what it's doing today, I was still trying to get placements and still trying to do things, but it didn't work for me. So then when I did Project Runway, that definitely launched me into everybody's living room Thursday nights at 9 p.m. And it opened a lot of doors. But however, I didn't bank and depend on the show's um, success to continue to push me to do things. I had to push myself and keep going, still meeting people, handing out my business cards, um, trying to meet stylists. Trying, I, I, I've always been that. I've always had the hustle, and I've never been afraid to walking up to somebody and talking to them and say, "Hi, can I dress you?" Even if they'd say, uh, "Yeah, talk to my publicist, talk to my uh, PR person." I was a persistent little prick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just keep on keep on going until until I couldn't go anymore, and I still continue to do that. But your name is I, I think that you're you're absolutely right about what reality show like Project Runway, even like American, you know, top model. If yeah. we put both of us on the map of the consumer market, right? Photographers are usually pretty hidden. And when I did, made a decision to join uh, the Tyra Banks series on American Top Model ANTM, I guess just shorten it. Um, it's it was. It was for the sole purpose that, that, that the consumers, that everyday people get to see what we get to do. And, and yeah, I was also surprised when celebrities watched oh, the yo, show. It was you're... amazing. <laughs> yeah, when um, a Badgley Mishka came up to me, Badgley Mishka came up to me and they were like, uh, I saw them, I saw them in New York on uh, 7th and Fashion Avenue. And, and they came up to me and they said, great job on the show. We really love what you're doing. And I, I was blown away. I, w I was like, oh my God. And I remember I met Shalom Harlow before. I and, worked with her. Can I tell uh, you? She's it's amazing. Like with the fairy. She just, you know, the movement, the dance. You saw her with Stephen she's Mandel everything. with Versace with her lace going. She that is... was amazing. I saw that on uh, on Pat's uh, Pat's Instagram. Yes, and um and 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 that was just amazing. But see, when you work with a model who's been in the game, who has all that experience, people don't understand. When you hire somebody like Shalom, you get what you pay for. Yeah. You're getting you're getting not only are you getting a legend, but you're getting experience and and that you know that that was accidental she just felt like dancing for and the, she is like that shoot. in real life she is like that she's so ethereal and she's so tactile and she's very spiritual she feels the energy and she goes with it well michael we're running out of time and i hate having to say goodbye but you know we can talk forever and i hope people will listen to we us can. because we'll I do would, this again we'll do it again i will absolutely love it and perhaps we actually do it in the same room next time that we can actually oh. Be, when this whole pandemic's over, I love to be side by side with you and create together. And I love to review that bucket list together because I have my own as well. And maybe we can help each other check out some of that list. We want to continue to talk to you guys. So please DM both of us. And any questions at all, any requests, please DM Michael. And by the way, Michael, we're all looking forward to see that sketch to finish of a drapery on the banana. Yes, until, sure. we, until we see each other again. I love you. Thank you for being here. And everybody love you too, else, Fred. Thanks, everybody. Fun, for and thank you for all your hard work, Michael.